ஆதிஷம் தேவம் சத்குரும் பிரம்ம வித்வரம் வசுதேவசுதம் தேவம் கம்சானோர மர்தனம் தேவகி பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரும் தமேவ மாதா ச பிதத்துவமேவ இந்த செகண்ட் சாப்டர் ஆஃப் தி அஷ்டாவக்ர கீதா ஸோ இந்த ஃபஸ்ட் சாப்டர் அஷ்டாவக்ர சேஜ் ஹேஸ் டிஸ்கஸ் ஆர் ரெஸ்பாண்டட் டு தி கொஸ்டின்ஸ் தட் ஜனகா போஸ் ஹவு யூ கேன் கெட் ஞானம் ஞானம் ஓ கதம் ஞானம் ஓ அப்னோதி அண்ட் ஹவு வீ கேன் கெட் லிபரேட்டட் இஃப் கெட்டிங் ஞானம் இஸ் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஃப்ரம் லிபரேஷன் and the third one is how we can get dispassion for things that we don't need it anymore so these are the three questions that are posed and astavakra tells they are not three different questions they are the same looking from a different points and how do i get knowledge knowledge of your own self or the self in all or the knowledge of brahman infinite knowing which there is nothing more to know and astavakra goes straight away to the talk to the to the teaching indicating the highest knowledge because the student janak maharaj is already prepared and read on the mind has already been ready to receptive for that so very fact that he wants to know how and uh, that's enough to for astavakra to give the highest knowledge so after listening to astavakra and contemplating on it and in the second chapter jana janaka screams out with excitement of wonder because now he can see the absolute truth and also recognizes the problems that he was having when he didn't know about his own nature because he was taking himself what he was not as i am this like all we do we say i am this i am this i am this because i cannot be this but that's what all we have and the very definition of i am this when anybody ask who are you i am this that's how it starts that indication of i do not know who i am knowing very well that who i am and then acting for transactional purposes is different from not knowing at all and uh, and uh, living with that notion and taking that that is a real and that is a bigger problem and in this second chapter we have been discussing how the janaka starts with ascharya oh what a wonder it is and he recognizes that he is the one who illumines the whole world he is the light of all is the light of consciousness and that which lights everything and that's what essentially in the last shloka 8 that we were discussing and we'll just go over a little bit and then start with our talk from shloka 9 in the shloka 8 it says prakash prakasho me nijam roopam nastirikto smyaham tatah நாஸ்திருக்தோஸ்மியஹம் ததாஷத்தே விஷ்வம் யாஷத்தே விஷ்வம் ததாஹம் பாசயே வகி ததாஹம் பாசயே வகி பிரகாஷோ மே நிஜம் ரூபம் நாஸ்திரிக்தோஸ்மியஹம் ததாஷத்தே விஷ்வம் ததாஹம் பாசயே வகி here is a highest example of who am i and i am not this okay but exactly who am i by rejecting what i am not i cannot come up with completely who i am unless i have some indication of who i am and that's why the scripture tells you who you are you are of the nature of consciousness so what does i am the nature of conscious i know i am conscious so what does that mean and here is a example of how you are really the light so here is a case where what exactly means by who am i i am the i am like a light i am the light in fact prakasho me nijam roopam my real nature is my my identity is i am the light so 
What does that mean? I am the light I and I illumine everything and here is where one has to be very careful and this example is uh, important to analyze the nature of the light even from the physics point as well as from the Vedanta point. It says light is such that I need a light to see everything else. So I need light illumine an object for me to see an object. So without the presence of a light I cannot see, my eyes cannot see. Whether eyes may be sensitive or the the uh, like a, like a, you know even small light in the night I may be able to see, but that means uh, light in the night is sufficient for me to see. Not that if it is completely dark I cannot see. So prakasho means nijam rupam. My this one is like a light, and point about the light is even in the physics point is that why we cannot see the light we may think that oh right now it is the bright outside so how am i seeing the light am i really seeing the light the fact is you cannot see the light even though you say you are seeing the light i'm not talking about a bulb or something like that is burning that is what the particularly the burning of something it's not that i'm talking i'm talking about the light looking at in the room, you say the room is lighted, so how do I know? I am seeing the light? No. What I am seeing is only light falling on the objects and getting reflected by the objects and I am seeing the reflected light, not the original light, reflected light coming to my eyes and through the retina forms an image of what? image of the light via reflection and the reflection takes the shape of the reflecting medium and what I am seeing is the reflected image of the object because it is the light that is getting reflected by the object. So what I am seeing is actually and we think we are seeing an object, we are not really seeing an object number one, we are seeing the light and we are not directly seeing the original light, we are only seeing the reflected light. And the reflected light follows, they take the shape of the image that it, of the object that is, that is getting, that is reflecting. And I say, I am seeing an object, but it is only image of the object. And that image that forms on the retina, inverted actually, it is transmitted to the mind by the optical nervous system in terms of a signal, electrical signal. So optical signal is converted to electrical signal and the brain receives the electrical signal in terms of charges. That's the end of the physics. Because from then on, we cannot say how it, you may call it a neurons and all other, but the, prob the point is, there is a conversion of that into a software called the thought. So object in terms of charges is converted into a thought process which is same as a software because even in computer when we, trans we provide the information it's only plus minus sign a charges but it's converted into a, a software through a program code. So there has to be a program code, without that other will be computer will not work. So the program code converts the input in terms of electrical signals into a software that which again communicates back in terms of the language that we are familiar. So same thing happens at the brain level where the charges are converted in by a software that Lord has provided. See the wonder of all wonders. And uh, the, the brain converts into the using that the software that Lord has provided into the, the thought process and that is essentially a thought that I see. The mind is a, a software in which the, the soft program and the thought is a perturbation in that mind. All that is implied. So, Lord has already provided a program code that converts into hardware into software. So, brain is like a computer hardware and so a program has to be provided to convert the sense input into a 
a software called Rutti Thought. And that it's not sufficient, there is a consciousness that comes into picture which illumines that thought and when again the same principle it gets reflected and the reflected consciousness is like a consciousness is like a light reflected consciousness it becomes a knowledge of because I become aware of the I become conscious of the thought and the conscious of the contents of the thoughts are nothing but the sense information from the gathered by the objects therefore it is the contents of the attributes of the object in the form of an image as received by our senses and that's what essentially we say I see an object there this is a chair, this is a table, this is a bed and all those things come only because through knowledge gain say this attributes we call it a mother teaches beta this is a chair beta that's a table so from then on a knowledge grows from the childhood on how I attributive content in the image is given a name and that's how the mind stores as the information so what is the light here the consciousness is acting like light illumining the objects so even though outside light is there outside light brings us only in terms of a thought process but the thought has to be again has to be illumined by the consciousness even I say the sun is shining even the sunlight or any light that I see as the bulb or anywhere but I can only see only when I illumine that light again by the light of consciousness so consciousness illumines the light as well as darkness also how when I'm in a pitch dark room when there's no light I say it's too dark in what light I am seeing the darkness in the light of consciousness because that light of consciousness can illumine even darkness and in that light only I know so how do I know I am because I am nature of the light itself nature of the consciousness itself and I don't need any other consciousness for me to be conscious of my consciousness if I bring another consciousness because some people think that consciousness is I have property and that's and I use consciousness then how do I be aware of that consciousness then I need another consciousness so it becomes a infinite regress Consciousness is self-revealing and self-existing entity and that what is here in this statement here Prakasho means Ijam Rupam I am able to light the whole universe not only the objects but even the lights of all lights outside lights also even the sun and the moon and everything else I am able to see because I am conscious of without me my light of consciousness illumining neither the sun can shine nor the moon can shine nor the darkness can shine nor anything can shine so everything that I am aware of everything that I am conscious of including the presence of the sun or the moon and the stars and the darkness and everything else is because I am illumining that with my light of consciousness without that that cannot be seen that I will not be, become conscious of if I'm not conscious of that means it is not in my knowledge and therefore whether the object exists or not if I don't know it if I don't know it object may exist may not exist it becomes indeterminate problem so here say the, using a light example it provides the highest philosophy of Vedanta along with the, the physics principles involved says prakasho me nijam rupam na atirikto so na atiriktaha there is nothing else other than me smyaham tataha yada prakashate vishwam so not only that I am as an illuminating consciousness and here he claims there is nothing other than me what are the objects so objects are also come from me only for that only Vedanta becomes a a pramana 
Not only I have to inquire who am I, I to know what the world is. The world is objects because I am dealing with the world and without knowing the world, I know who am I, who am I, inquiry will not end unless I understand the world is also me. How can the world be me? Because from me only it came, by me only they are sustained and into me only they go back. That's exactly being discussed in the chapter in the slokas from 9 on. So, Yada Prakasate Vishwam. So, world is seen that the, I am conscious of the world because I am the one who is illumining the world. Without me illumining the world, the existence of the world cannot be even established from my point. From your point as can be established, you may claim, because even if I am in deep sleep state, you say, I am awake and I can see the world. But whether you are able to see the world or not, how do I know? Unless I am awake. So, my awakening and even if you report that I saw when you were this one is on low, when I had to know by when your statement, so I should have a faith in your statement that becomes a Shabda Pramana. So, even your own existence I had to establish first before you can say anything else. So, I am the only one that has to establish the existence of the world. But I illumine the whole world. But how about me? I don't need anything else to illumine. I cannot say in the pitch dark room, I cannot see myself. I know I am there and I am no I am conscious entity. I need light to see everything else, but I don't need light to see myself because I am self-conscious, self-existing, and therefore self-proven also. This is the, one of the beautiful slokas of, of this chapter that gives an example of the light principle and how Vedanta is zero sin and uh, exactly indicating why science also applies in them. It's not, Vedanta is not unscientific. It's exactly what science tells also, if you understand correctly. Now we go to the, the, a similar sloka is there in the Gita that uh, Swami Tibanji quotes in the Gita sloka 13, 33 sloka Yada prakasha yatye kaha krusnam loka mimam ravihi shetram shetri tada krusnam prakasha yami bharata So the chetram, the field that was the chetra chetragnya the chapter it says everything else is Shetram field. That means they are inert uh, objects for my knowledge. And I am Shetragnya, I am the knower of the field. And every one thinks I am the knower of the field. But Krishna says, Shetragnyam Chapimam Vidhi Sarva Shetreshu Bharata. I am the real knower in all fields. We are here talking about that Prakashaya meme. That is my real nature. So you can claim yourself, I am that consciousness which is indivisible, that is illumining all minds, and because of which all minds locally become as conscious entities to see the world with them. So that is what essentially Gita Slok Kshetra Kshetra Gnami Bhagam. Now we go to this sloka 9. Aho vikalpitam vishvam, aho vikalpitam vishvam, agyanatmai bhasate, agyanatmai bhasate, rupyam sekta pane rajo, rupyam supta pane rajo, varisurya kareyatha. Vari Surya Kareyatha Together Aho Vikalpitam Vishwam Agyanatmai Bhasate Rupyam Sukta Pani Rajo Vari Surya Kareyatha So this chapter, this sloka gives three examples of how the world itself is, is not really real. Aho Vikalpitam Vishwam Aho 
Vikalpitam Vishwam. The world came into picture because of Vikalpana. Vikalpana means that which is misapprehended. Because of misapprehension, the world is. What is this misapprehension? We will see. Because of Ajnanat Mai Bhasate. Because of the ignorance, it has come and is now illumined by me only. So, the existence of the world itself is due to to ignorance. So the origin of the of the existence is due to due to the ignorance and ignorance of what? Ignorance of not knowing my true nature and therefore the world is projected. So vikalpana, vikal means it is a projection of myself. Project I project the whole universe because of ajnana, because of not knowing the truth that was discussed in the in the earlier chapter and that's discussed in the whole Vedanta also how the whole world comes from me sustained by me and it goes back to me into me that Ajnanam is the cause for the projection of that when say Ajnanam the Avidya Avidya is the root cause and Avidya there is a big discussion in terms of in the Vedanta whether it is the the a real type of Ajna, um, Avidya or is it a false type of Avidya? In the sense it is a Bhava Rupa or a Bhava Rupa. But here we don't want to get into their technical aspects and here the Ashtavakra Gita talks directly into the, about, about the value, about the teaching. So let's talk about what is Vikal, Vikalpitam Vishwam. So Ajnanath my bhasate, it is illumined by me because of ignorance. Not only illumined, bhasate also includes it exists because of me only. So not only it comes into existence because of ajnana, it also comes into existence because of me. That me stands for not this local me, but in terms of pure existing consciousness, Brahman that I am. So one has to shift the attention that it is from the totality, the whole creation. How is the totality, that is, how is it created? That's why the Vedanta defines how it comes. But here they give you the, 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 the three examples are given and three examples one by one, if you look at it, it goes from a Pratibhasika to Vyavaharika examples. What is Pratibhasika? What is Vyavaharika? We will see here. Rupyam, Suktau. So that's one example. Pani, Rajau. That's the second example. Vari, Surya, Kare, Yatha. Just as all these three. Rupyam, Suktau. So what is Rupyam, Suktau? It is like a Rupyam is the, the silver in the shell. So silver in the shell. So what is the silver in the shell? So we need to understand. So as I am walking in the beach, suddenly I found something shining and something shining just like a silver there. Since I have a value for the silver, thinking that it is a silver and I'm happy that I want to, I found some silver, which I can sell of course in the market and make money. So I bend down thinking that it is a shell, it is a sil silver, and when I pick it up and look at it, it's not really silver, although it appeared to be silver, but it's not really silver. What if there is only suktao, that means a shell. So shell, it, it's inside, is shining like a silver, and a silver lining is there, the coating as though, and the, when it reflected, it gives appearance just as the silver giving appearance when it reflects the light. So here we have to be careful here. The silvery part is the one that is causing a problem. So the, the, the shell has a silvery part. And when I look at this, this one and the dominant characteristic or dominant attribute comes out immediately because it's a dominant. And the dominant characteristic of the silver or gold is it's a shiningness and that property comes immediately to the mind and mind immediately jumps into that based on that attributes alone. Because the rest of the attributes, yes, it's a finite object. 
so the finite silver and it is there lying on on the ground and the reflecting and the reflection gives as though appearance of a silver so those are the immediate attributes that i am getting and therefore i conclude based on those attributes that it is indeed silver otherwise i won't bend it down and pick it up if i know it's already a shell i won't pick it up so my action the subsequent action is because of my knowledge that it is silver based on the partial attributes of the silvery reflection that occurred so when i picked it up only i get other attributes of the object and look around other side is a shell not silver other side is also a silver then there is a real silver so when i look at it is a it's a shell so other attributes of the object the shellness has come out and i say oh this is a shell only immediately i throw it out because it's of no value to me anymore so therefore i i am picking up because of the attributive content and i do not have the complete knowledge that it is a shell therefore partial knowledge is only there the silvery object is there there is an object there is a silveriness these are the attributes of the object that i receive based on that i say there is an object and it is silver so there is a non apprehension of the of the of the object as it is that is a shell so non apprehension of the shellness of the object i miss apprehension that it is a, a silver therefore i picked it up and i got other attributes so i get a better pramana so now i know it is even though it is was shining and still may be shining like a silver one side it's not really silver it's only the shall be from the based on the other attributes of the of the object so there is a the uh, misapprehension and the the non apprehension and the misapprehension two things happen because of partial ignorance partial ignorance is that it is the object is not completely known and therefore two one is that i do not know the object number 1 that's called avidya and because of that there is an avarana that means the the truth is covered because of the ignorance and therefore the mind based on that is projecting uh, a, a object but the mind that is projecting is also due to avidya that's what he is here is going to talk so it is avidya is in terms of the totality avidya partial at the transactional level avidya from the total from the original level of the mind also that's what we will see vishwam itself is kalpitam so rupyam suktao that's one example where non apprehension causes a misapprehension then pani rajjo the snake in the rope we went through that when i see in the in the in the dark in the semi dark room there is enough light then i see a, an object there so if it is completely dark i don't see any object but since i see there is enough light for me to see there is an object there and it's 5 feet long and when i stepped on it it's soft so all those attributes are applicable both to the rope and and the snake at called sadrasyam and i based on that uh, my mind cannot distinguish whether it's a rope or a snake even though it could distinguish that it is not an elephant or something but it could dis- it could not distinguish whether it is a snake or a rope i jump to conclusion because of my fear that it is a snake and uh, my security is more important and therefore i st- started running away from that so panau rajyo so ignorance of the rope contributed to the projection of the snake and these two examples are called pratibhasika so the silver came from my mind not from anywhere as same way the snake also came from my mind and the third one is vadi surya kare yatha just as the the vadi the water in the reflected sunlight so in the in the desert i am seeing i am thirsty so i want looking for a water and i see there's a lot of water in the horizon and 
if you really go there there is no water because it is the sunlight at a glancing angle gives the impression of a uh, water there so not knowing the truth about the the reflection reflection of the sunlight in that form and i take it as a real water and that once i understood that it is not really real water i may still see that but in the other two cases the i don't see any more silver in that shell at least that particular shell and i don't see a snake in that particular rope because once i have the nine knowledge the delusion gone here even though i have the knowledge that it is not really water i can still see as though it is a water mirage water can still be there and that's what is called the the vyavaharika satyam in the case of the pratibhasika only i see it other fellow may see better vision 20 20 vision he may see a rope and other fellow may already gone through he knows all our shells only he may have better knowledge but from their point they don't see they don't have problem and it's therefore it is my mind that is projecting whereas in the case of the water every mind the human mind projects it because of the glancing angle angle which is common to everybody and therefore that is called vyavaharika error the other sort pratibhasika but there are errors there but in the case of the universe i say the universe is real but vedanta pramana says it is not really real from you only it came by you it is sustained into which you go back into you and you are that brahman from that consciousness for that the scripture alone becomes a pramana why i need vedanta as a pramana for this reason to declare that the world is not really real otherwise when i'm transacting it's so real when i'm so hungry you can say you can world is not real but let me first eat so don't say food is unreal so uh, from what reference the unreality is established and that's where the the acharyas get confu- the confused also they think the world is real jaga satyam jiva satyam paramatma satyam that's how the even vedantins those who are expert in vedanta also misled even patanjali yoga talks about the the duality the world is real only for them so one has to be careful why advaita says it's not real and here it says it is as though my own projection where my stand for the tota i am in that it's called the the aneka jeeva vada the eka jeeva vada aneka jeeva vada the i see it therefore it's not real that's essentially the implication of that and we have to stop with this uh, time so we'll continue with the shloka 10 in the next shloka next class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnameva visishyate om shanti 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम